to Life with David. I'm David, and today I have a sinking feeling. You know, that feeling that something is wrong? Something like the lift cylinder on my office chair? This chair is over 20 years old and has given me good service. About three years ago it started sinking, so I used a little hydraulic jack oil to repair the cylinder. That worked fine, but it's time to do it again. I know that I could buy a replacement cylinder, but what's the fun in that? So why don't you join me as I repair my pneumatic lift cylinder? I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. Today we're working with a high pressure gas cylinder. Do not damage this cylinder or you could experience a rapid pressure release. Even though there isn't much gas in the cylinder, it could hurt you. Also, be careful when operating the cylinder so you don't get caught up in the mechanism. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. And if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these things, then don't. Now let's get started. The height adjustment mechanism for my office chair uses a pneumatic lift cylinder enclosed in a center support column. This cylinder has a support rod on one end that supports the weight of the chair and occupant. On the other end is a button for adjusting the chair height. This turned out to be a much different video than I originally thought. I always like to provide background on what I do but the online information that I found about lift cylinders was really horrible. So I had to do some reverse engineering from a couple dissection videos on the web in order to show you how these lift cylinders work. A pneumatic lift cylinder uses the principle of a double-sided piston and high-pressure gas that travels between either end of the cylinder with a valve that locks the piston in place. Actional lift cylinders incorporate a double-sided piston attached to a support shaft that travels in an open-ended inner cylinder. That inner cylinder is housed in an outer tube that also contains the valve, gas seals, and nitrogen that is pressurized to about 2,000 psi. The valve at the top of the cylinder controls the gas flow between the top of the piston and the bottom of the piston. The gas flows between the top and bottom of the inner cylinder through the annulus between the inner cylinder and the outer tube. The top of the piston has more surface area than the bottom of the piston because the gas doesn't act on an area taken up by the support rod. When the cylinder is not supporting a load and the valve is closed, the gas pressure is higher on the bottom of the piston than on the top. What's cool is that when the valve is open, the gas flows from the high pressure side to the low pressure side, thus filling the upper cylinder and causing the piston to travel downward. This is what raises your chair when you pull the lever and stand up. No springs, just high pressure gas. Conversely, when you sit on the chair, the gas in the upper cylinder is compressed by your weight and the pressure is higher than the gas in the lower cylinder. So when you open the valve, gas flows from the upper cylinder to the lower cylinder, causing the piston to travel upward and your chair to lower. The pressure of the gas is critical. If the pressure is too low, the chair will not support your weight at all. It will just immediately drop to the bottom position when you sit on it. The gas can leak out through the support shaft seals or the valve outer seal. If this happens, you have no choice but to replace the cylinder. However, if the chair holds your weight initially but then slowly sinks, then you might be able to repair the cylinder. There are only two places for gas to leak to cause this symptom, the valve inner seal and the piston seal. Often this is because the seal lubricant has been rubbed away or has dried out. I've had some luck in restoring the operation of lift cylinders that slowly sink. I use a little hydraulic jack oil to lubricate the support shaft and the valve mechanism. I don't know if it's the jack oil 
or that I turned the chair upside down and cycled the cylinder, but it worked. Anyway, the last time I fixed this cylinder, I did it without removing the cylinder from the chair mechanism. It was kind of awkward. However, today I'm removing the cylinder so I can show you exactly what I did. I removed a clip and washer at the bottom of the chair base and slid off the base and the outer cover. All that was left was to remove the cylinder from the tapered hole in the seat. This proved a little bit more difficult than expected. First, I tried holding the cylinder and striking the seat with a hammer as recommended by several cylinder replacement videos. That didn't work at all. Next, I made a clamp for the cylinder and tried to use bar clamps and a hammer to force it off. Again, no joy. Finally, I removed the seat mechanism from the seat so I could get a punch on the edge of the cylinder. This time it worked, although I did dent the end of the cylinder. However, it doesn't affect the valve operation. After making sure the cylinder was fully compressed, I supported the cylinder in a button-up orientation. Then I made an aluminum foil cofferdam around the button end and added about a tablespoon of hydraulic jack oil. When I pressed the button with a screwdriver, the piston extended and a little oil lubricated the valve. I repeated the process again on the button end before I turned my attention to the rod end. I clamped the cylinder so the button was compressed by the bottom of the vise and the operating rod was on top. I added an aluminum foil dam and about a teaspoon of oil. Then I compressed the cylinder several times, working the oil into the bottom of the cylinder. I hope you appreciate my attempts to keep this a family-friendly video. All that was left was to reassemble the chair. Before I installed the cylinder into the seat mechanism, I measured it so I could purchase a replacement in case this fix didn't work. I reattached the seat mechanism and then installed the bottom rubber bushing and support bearing to the operating rod. After adding the outer cover, I slid the chair base over the cylinder and reattached the washer and retaining clip. I tried out the chair, and the sinking problem was cured. Success! Thanks for joining me today. We learned how a pneumatic office chair lift cylinder works, and then used that information to repair mine. I hope to get several more years out of my lift cylinder before it needs attention again. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!